All right, I know I haven't been around here for a while. Um, I took two week vacation off uh, during New Year's and Christmas and all that. You know, it's usually a slow time around there. Uh, pretty much uh, took my load, took, oh, let's see, I picked up a load Thursday before Christmas. Well, um, yeah, Thursday before Christmas Day. Took it home with me, uh, and then delivered it on Sunday. Um, it was paying, uh, let's see, I think it was from Harrison, Harrisonburg, Virginia, somewhere around there. I think I picked it up. Uh, took it up to Boston for like $5,200, so uh, it was worth it. And then I took the rest of the, the week off and the week after that. So, uh, you know, I basically kind of busy, not really playing catch up, but kind of. Um, I guess what this video is going to really be about is uh, buying an old truck again. Uh, since I've had this truck, uh, I've taken it to a shop and had like $3,200 worth of uh, engine mounts put in. Uh, they also did the overhead. Uh, let's see, before that I replaced all the, all the heater hoses on it all the coolant hoses I did that myself that still was about uh, I think like $180 or $150 for all the hoses let's see from there on um, let's see an oil change an oil sample all that together the oil change was 300 bucks it's pretty cheap um, that's that's using loves oil and loves filters uh, they were out of oil except for loves and I said well I said I'm already getting the cheap oil <laughs> might as well throw the cheap filters on too so um, so let's see we're at 35 plus 200 plus 300 um, had to put two tires on uh, when I bought the truck the guy gave took some money off but somebody swapped the tires around on it on one axle so I bought two tires. I had to get those up in New York. Um, there's a whole situation with DOT and a supposed flat tire. Something wrong. Their, their air pressure gauge wasn't working. I was put out of service, but we got that data queued and that took off. So the problem was I had to get two tires right away. Um, you know, on top of that. So that was like $900 for two no-name tires. Let's see, what else do we have go on? Um, just little things. Um, I had to put belts on. Uh, I had the thermostat changed. Belts and thermostat, I could have done that myself. But uh, I had an engine noise, something noise was going on. It didn't sound too cool. So I took it in to have it maybe have another uh, valve, uh, valve adjustment done. And they check the pulleys and everything, and they're like, "Look, you need a, you need a uh, uh, belts. They're all cracked and everything." So I said, "All right, yeah, go ahead and put the belts on." And I said, "Why well, it's there? Might as well put a thermostat in because I know when I change the coolant, somebody put uh, somebody put that uh, stop leak in because the radiator. Oh yeah, I forgot the radiator was replaced too. Yeah, that that was done." Um, Oh, I didn't even get to that part yet. <laughs> so, so yeah, so we're up to about, we'll say $4,000 already after I bought the truck. Between the, having all the engine mounts changed because they were all toasted because there was an oil leak. Still, well, there isn't any more thanks to the Lucas stop leak, but, but, um, yeah, I'm doing this after a long run. I'm kind of tired, but I figured I'd might as well do it now. <laughs> Ain't nothing else better to do. So yeah, so there we go. We got the engine mounts and the overhead. That was about three thousand dollars. Another two hundred dollars for the hoses and coolant and everything. Um, I did that myself. Um, another five hundred dollars for the the belts and the um, thermostat that was put in. Then we get to the big repairs. Uh, there was. Uh, the rear went, uh, 
Let's see the front, uh, the front axle, the, re the rear went. The actual uh, power divider decided to explode. Um, looks like it was half-ass repaired before. And they just threw gears in it. I guess didn't want to last any longer. So uh, that cost. Uh, let's see, that was about thousand dollars for a used used power divider, and like another. 1500 to put it in or something. I think all together it came out to $3,000. So now we're up to six. Uh, we'll say seven. We're up to about seven. And the tires, that was $1,000. Now we're up to eight. Uh, and this is all what? Since I bought this truck in what? Uh, August? Bought the truck in August, I think. So now we're up to 8000 Then, uh, then the other rear uh, had a crack in it, started leaking, uh, started leaking differential fluid over by the spring. I did that myself uh, with the help of a buddy's uh, three-quarter inch Milwaukee Impact and a JLG high lift um, at, a, at a shop um, where I parked the truck at. The guy graciously lets me use it. So right there was a... Uh, that would have been probably if I had somebody else do that, it would have been another three thousand dollars. They would have to pull the rear out, weld the crack up, or you that. Actually, the place, the place I was taking the truck to, actually uh, wanted to. You know, I asked them. You know, what would they do? They said they just replace the rear with a junkyard rear or whatever. So yeah, so right there's another three thousand dollars. So now I'm up to like what eleven, twelve. Uh, yesterday I just spent another three hundred. I spent three hundred dollars literally yesterday. And had a uh, had them do a wheel seal, <laughs> and I'm up in Maine right now. And I get out, do my pre trip again, and I smell smell gear oil again. So I walk around, and I can see a little bit of black gunk on my one axle again. My other axle's leaking now, the front and the front passenger side. I just had the driver rear done. That front passenger axle's leaking wheel seal so right there hopefully I can get back home without uh, getting stopped at a way station either that or I'm going to stop at the TA up here and um, uh, actually I don't even know if they have a shop for the TA up here in uh, what is it called uh, where is that TA at oh it's in New Hampshire yeah I think the TA is in New Hampshire so I'm going to stop there uh, or I'll check to see if they stop a shop maybe I'll have them do the freaking wheel seal at that rate when I get back, I'm just gonna have him have uh, my guy do the other two, and uh, basically do the brakes all the way around too. They're still good, but might as well have the brakes match. So, yeah. So right there. So in a matter of what August, September, October, November, December, January. Actually, no. I might have bought the truck in September. Actually, so September, August, November. Uh, December, January. So in a matter of five months, I've put twelve thousand dollars in this old truck. Now, uh, it's up to you how you look at that. So far, I haven't had any motor work or anything really like hardcore go wrong. I'm not saying that it probably doesn't need it. Uh, it had tons of leaks. Uh, the rear case seal was leaking. Uh, the front case seal was leaking. Typical ISX. Uh, CM870. Um, luckily, a uh, whole gallon of Lucas fixed that. It's barely, you know, barely seeps now. Um, she's starting, she didn't have no blow by when I bought her, but she's starting to, you know, uh, I don't know, it comes and goes. It don't have a crankcase filter, so it ain't that. So, I don't know, she's starting to get some blow by. Uh, finding, you know, moist spot on the axle there by the by the uh, uh, blow by tube um, last week it was uh, the weekend it didn't get out of like the single digits I left the truck running uh, through my 34 hour break and came back to the truck and there was probably about a 4 by 6 wet spot of oil underneath the blow by tube so I'm guessing she's starting to have blow by uh, she's got what 690,000 miles on her now and uh, like 24,000 hours 
So it's getting it's getting rebuild time here eventually. I'm just gonna run her until until you know you can tell she needs a rebuild. So far she's only since I changed the oil, I put a half a gallon in. Um, I think I got maybe 8,000 miles ago, but I've had to put a half a gallon in, and I just put another gallon. So I put a whole gallon in so far. So if she lasts before she gets off the check marks till the oil change, she's using a gallon of oil. So I guess that ain't too bad at 20,000 miles. But uh, let's see. Here's the biggest difference, I would say, between buying a new truck and a used truck. Well, you know what? We're not even going to say new. Cause nobody's going to really be able to afford a brand new truck right now. Uh, I'm looking at used trucks with three, four 400,000 miles on them, and they're asking, <laughs> they're asking like 50, 60 grand above what they were brand new. So we're, we're going to say no one's going to be buying a new truck right now. So let's say you buy... So you buy a used used truck off of actually to be honest a used truck off of a well it depends I guess you can always get you know somebody fleas bag you over on that because I will say this truck when I bought it it was lipstick up I called it lipstick it it was all the frame was painted everything was all cleaned up they they uh, you know polished the rims polished the bumper polished everything that could be polished uh, fixed the hood painted it. You know a spray paint job but it looked good you know you couldn't really tell unless you were like staring at it for a while um, but the hoods all starting to crack again all the bondo or whatever they use is starting to crack the hood shot crack well it ain't shot but it, it definitely needs some fiberglass fiberglass work I mean I could do that it's not that bad of a deal um, but um, so there's that there's uh, the front bumper. Front bumper looked brand new. Well, it just hits. I just hit you know some winter weather and some salt and stuff, and it must be the thinnest, thinnest chrome bumper possible. There's rust spots all over the damn bumper, all over it. So it's either brand new or, or it was with the truck and they they freaking polished the shit out of it to make it look good. Um, and it just never got hit or dented up that bad. Um, let's see what else is going on with it. Uh, let's see the airbags. I'm gonna need airbags. They're all dry, rotten, cracked, except for one. It's gonna probably need shocks then too. So let's see. I'm let's say I'm in it now. Thirteen grand repairs. I pretty much used my maintenance account up. I had uh, I had about ten grand sitting in the maintenance account just for this damn thing. And a uh, the uh, five thousand dollar credit card. I got some. Uh, I used three thousand dollars of credit card. I got a little bit of mains left, but you know um, the payments are nine hundred dollars a month, which ain't bad at all. Uh, it's only a three year loan, so there I got that going for it. I'm trying to be more uh, more enthusiastic here, but I'm just just be filling on the weather a little bit uh, let's see so if I went and bought a fairly new used truck probably be paying about realistically here guys you're gonna be paying about sixty seventy thousand dollars for a truck with 500,000 miles on it it's I don't know from 2014 it's just the way it is the way the market is right now uh, we're gonna go to a dealer just know that they did everything possible to make that thing look as clean and cute as possible. Um, you're not going to see any oil leaks. You're not going to see nothing. It's all going to be clean. You're going to drive it for, I don't know, I drove this thing for about a good half hour. Beat the balls off of it. And ran good. Uh, Bob tailing. Ran good. Um, I didn't even bother asking the rear ratios or checking any of that stuff. I should have. Freaking rear ratio. The fucking gear ratios on this uh, rear sh shit. They're 264s with a direct drive. It's great on very small hills. Does pulls it okay. Um, the highway it does good. The flat level ground. As soon as you hit something more than like a six percent grade, or, or right around there, it's 35, 40 mile an hour up the hill, killing itself. But uh, you know, it doesn't take much to slow this thing down. 
So yeah, so do your research. Um, like I said, check the rears. If it, if it's anything under, I would say a 308 rear, drive it, see what it drives like. You know, if it has a 13 speed, it'll probably be okay. This is only a direct 10. Um, but I, I, I think if I ever buy a truck again, it's not gonna have anything under 308. I might even, you know, depending on how I feel about this thing, I might change the rear in it, might change the transmission. Uh, but to be honest, at 600,000 miles, I know this damn Cummins, probably around a million, is going to need a rebuild. So why why waste the money on that? Um, getting back to the topic of new versus old. Sure, I could have probably, you know, unless I had like... <coughs> I could have took the could have took the twenty grand I had. I could have put it down on a new truck, newer truck I should say. So now I got this four or five hundred thousand mile, you know, ten year old truck we'll say, maybe older. And uh, I'm paying what six let's say six year loan, uh, twenty grand down. Let's say it was sixty seven. Let's say we'll say it's sixty thousand dollars. Still leaves me thirty thousand. Yeah, sure. You, you get a six-year loan on it. You could probably get the payments down to where I was. That's if the bank will approve you for that. Most likely they won't. They'll probably want at least a forty-two month loan or something or thirty-six. Um, but either way, if you go above that, let's say a hundred thousand and stuff, you're still gonna have a two thousand dollar month payment. So now you got a truck with no warranty or fake warranty. Uh, I've heard all the horror stories. And uh, you start having DEF problems, DPF problems, depending on the make. You, you know, you could probably get away with the Cummins. You could probably get away with going to your small guys and figuring it out. Uh, last truck I had before this had a pack car in it. Thank God I got out from underneath that thing. I would say every month, every month had to go to the Kenworth dealership. I've looked all over the place, called shop after shop. Hey, do you have uh, Davy 4, Davy this, Davy, Davy, Davy. No, 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 we don't touch back car. We don't do this. We don't do anything but normal maintenance. Sometimes they wouldn't even want to do an overhead on it. So, that's the problem I had with my pack car. Just tons of electrical wiring and DPF problems. The engine itself felt, uh, felt kind of underpowered, but it, it ran good, I guess you could say. You know, it ran good. Um, never had any problems really mechanically. Uh, I think the only mechanical problem I had was the, uh, the, uh, fan clutch decided to come apart, and an idler pulley. Oh, and, uh, and a, uh, air-to-air. -air. I changed that myself. Uh, the fan clutch I had done, that, that was just, that was a pain in the ass. Um, oh, and then I had problems with those silicone, those blue silicone hoses. I had to keep changing them, constant torque. And they just always wanted to, after I shut the truck off and they were hot, they always wanted to, you know, after the truck cooled down, they always wanted to see. So, I know this is getting kind of long. I'm on 20 minutes here. Uh, just about. So, that's my little video for tonight on the uh, glories of being an owner-operator. Uh, ship breaks. Uh, I'm hoping this damn girl quits nickel and dime me here uh, soon because you lose a lot more than just a couple hundred bucks. Um, everybody's busy right now. Uh, I got I got this truck in to do a wheel seal after I got back. Uh, I dropped off a load, had to drive back like 30, 40 minutes. And then I had to wait like two hours for them to get a truck out of the shop. They only had a four-bay shop and they're they're full. They're doing the one truck's getting an engine mount, engine done. I mean, engine done in it. Another truck had transmission done in it, and then they were doing something with two other trucks. So I had to wait. Um, I called the TA up. They told me like, realistically, the guy's like six to eight hours. So, yeah, you know, every time I've called TAs up lately, it's been, you know, five hours, six hours, whatever. So. You know, I lost I lost a day of pay for a wheel seal. I made up for it, kind of. I got one load in the middle of the night, just about, for 650 bucks. But, you know, that's still nothing. Basically, you go down you go down a day, 
if it, you're going to lose whatever it, whatever it cost you in parts and labor, plus we'll say easily make fifteen hundred bucks today. So let's say you waste it. I wasted what three hundred three hundred dollars to replace a wheel seal and um, and shoes. Uh, and uh, what sixteen hundred bucks I lost. Could you know doing a run in a day? So technically, basically, I lost two thousand dollars. If you really look at that way. Uh, I lost revenue and I lost out on the you know repair. So I'm gonna try to make some more videos. I don't know. Um, been kind of bummed out. I'm making good money, but I don't know. Every time you turn around, there's something wrong now. Uh, at least once a week. Uh, let's see, what was it last week? Uh, well, yeah. I had the uh, the truck in, you know, after the holiday and everything. You know, I still took two weeks off. You know, I brought the truck in, and it still took them a while to look at it. So I lost. Technically, I didn't want to take the whole two weeks off, but I did. So, you know, there's still costs come out. You still have the... Uh, uh, insurance and trailer rental and everything so you know even though I had money sitting in the bank and everything was good and you still start out again in a hole so like a whole week I worked for nothing just about so uh this is what the third week third week of me like actually running again without too many problems so uh comments questions whatever you'd like to know um I'm going to probably make a better video than this. This is just me rambling right now after driving for about nine hours. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to hit the sack. So.